on World News Tonight. Secret shipments. North Korea accused of supplying battlefield missiles to the Russian mercenary group Wagner. Are the accusations true? Find out tonight. Holiday nightmare. States of emergencies declared in the United States as once in a generation storm sweeps across the nation. Continuing chaos. Firstly, only nurses, but now all workers in the United Kingdom are on strike for a higher pay. And a sweet Christmas. Poland adds a sweet touch to this year's Christmas with chocolate trains and gingerbread cities. This is Ada Derana World News Tonight. Reporting from Colombo, here is Suzanne Chanelli. Good evening and thank you for joining us on World News Tonight. Now the war in Ukraine is still on the top stories of our broadcast tonight as Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky pushes for further support from Western world leaders. Russian President Vladimir Putin says that Moscow wants to negotiate an end to the war, but still finds ways to counter military support from G7 countries. And this is actually the first time the Russian president used the word war to refer to the conflict in Ukraine. Referring to the conflict in Ukraine as a war, Russian President Vladimir Putin said during a press conference in Moscow on Thursday that he wants to end the fighting and that this would inevitably involve a diplomatic solution. Our goal is not to spin the flywheel of military conflict, but on the contrary, to end this war. We are striving for this and will continue to strive. During the 10 months of conflict, Putin has consistently called Russia's invasion of Ukraine a special military operation and not a war. U.S. officials were quick to cast doubt on Putin's intentions. White House spokesman John Kirby said Putin has not shown any interest in negotiating an end to the war. Kirby told reporters during an online briefing, Everything Putin is doing on the ground and in the air bespeaks a man who wants to continue to visit violence upon the Ukrainian people and escalate the war. Russia has persistently said it is open to negotiations, but Ukraine and its allies suspect a ploy to buy time after a series of Russian defeats have swung the momentum of the 10-month war in favor of Kyiv. Putin's comments come a day after U.S. President Joe Biden hosted Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky at the White House, promising the Ukrainian leader unwavering U.S. support and announcing a new $1.85 billion military aid package, which includes the Patriot air defense system. It's one of the most advanced U.S. air defense systems, capable of intercepting threats such as aircraft and ballistic missiles. But Putin on Thursday downplayed the Patriot system, saying it was quite old and did not work like Russia's S-300 system. The Kremlin said the U.S. supplying it would not contribute to settling the conflict in Ukraine or prevent Russia from achieving its goals. Ukraine's attempts to keep Russian missiles at bay are common in the skies over Ukraine and their outcomes have a direct bearing on the lives of millions of people who are left without heat, power and running water during the freezing winter if defences fail. As Russian cruise missiles sped towards their target this month, a Ukrainian pilot gave chase and locked onto two of them but couldn't take the shot due to being too near a town. The targets were passed on to Ukraine's ground-based air defences, which shot them down, like hundreds of missiles since October, blunting the impact of a Russian air campaign that aims to destroy the country's power grid. Air defence units are deployed where they're needed most, and fighter pilots cover the gaps. A tall order in the decades-old MiG-29, flown by Ukrainian pilot codenamed Juice. Uh, actually, our... Uh, 40 years old radars were not even designed to uh, to be used to uh, to engage such such uh, such type of of of, of aerial uh, threats. Russia has launched nine large-scale air attacks, usually firing more than 70 missiles at a time, since October 10th. Ukraine's record of downing missiles has ranged from around 50 percent to as much as 85 percent, based on Ukrainian data. Still, those which come through inflict serious damage. The outcomes of such skirmishes have a direct bearing on the lives of millions of people who are left without heat, power or running water during the freezing winter if defences fail. Ukraine calls the attacks a war crime, 
Russia says the electricity grid is a legitimate military target in its special operation. It's Ukraine's ground-based air defense units that shoot down the vast majority of missiles and drones, not aging warplanes. That's according to Ukraine Air Force spokesman Yuri Inat. Both missiles and drones fly along the course of rivers to be as low as possible and disappear from radars. If they're low enough, they just disappear. We don't see it for some time. Then they pop up again. It's a game of cat and mouse. Ukraine's military intelligence chief has estimated that Russia may only have enough high-precision weapons for a few more major airstrikes. But Ukrainian officials also acknowledge that their own stocks of defensive weapons are dwindling as the invasion nears the 10-month mark. On Wednesday, the United States announced $1.85 billion in additional military assistance for Ukraine, including a transfer of the Patriot air defense system. The U.S. confirms that North Korea delivered weapons to Russia's paramilitary Wagner Group. The White House condemned the arms shipment to the private military company and said it plans to raise the issue with the U.N. Security Council. The U.N. Secretary General spokesperson said at a briefing later in the day that the global organization had no information about the alleged arms deliveries from North Korea. However, the Foreign Ministry of North Korea rejected claims of alleged arms supplies to Russia. The White House on Thursday said North Korea has sold weapons to a private Russian military company, the Wagner Group. Often called Russian President Vladimir Putin's off-the-books troops, the mercenary group has been a key player in the ongoing conflict in Ukraine. The news first reported by Reuters was confirmed by U.S. National Security Council spokesperson John Kirby. Today we can confirm that North Korea has completed an initial arms delivery to Wagner which paid for that equipment. Last month, North Korea delivered infantry rockets and missiles into Russia for use by Wagner. The move apparently indicates that the Wagner Group is expanding its role in the war. Kirby said the amount delivered will not change the battlefield dynamics, but added more military equipment is expected. Meanwhile, Wagner Group leader Yevgeny Prigozhin denied the assertion as gossip and speculation. The White House also hinted at its future moves regarding the issue. We're going to raise these violations with the Security Council alongside of our allies and partners. And it also condemned Pyongyang for its action and called for it to immediately cease these deliveries. This only came a day after the Biden administration announced new sanctions on technology exports to the Wagner Group. This also followed Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky's visit to Washington on Wednesday. During his speech to Congress, Zelensky thanked Washington for its military assistance and said more was needed to fend off Russian advances. Over in the United States, now a major winter storm and cold blast will impact nearly every state and bring what the U.S. National Weather Service is calling a once-in-a-generation type event that will cripple travel on some of the busiest travel days of the year. The strengthening storm will bring more than a foot of snow and possibly a blizzard conditions to the Midwest as the Weather Service warns of life-threatening wind chills for millions. As heavy snow and vicious cold sweeps through North America, turning roads icy and shrouding airport runways in white, airlines canceled more than 2,700 U.S. flights Thursday and Friday, disrupting holiday travel for thousands. The powerful storm hitting the United States, bringing holiday plans to a halt. President Joe Biden urged Americans to take precautions. Uh, it's dangerous and threatening. This is really a very serious uh, weather alert here. And it goes from Oklahoma all the way to uh, Wyoming and Wyoming to Maine. And it's a real consequence. So I encourage everyone, everyone, please heed the local warnings. The extreme weather coincided with what could be one of the busiest travel seasons. The FAA said Thursday the winter storm was bringing blizzard conditions to the Midwest, with major travel disruptions expected in Chicago, Detroit and Minneapolis-St. Paul. The roads in Bloomington, Minnesota already presented drivers with a challenge on Wednesday. More than 1,800 U.S. flights had been canceled Thursday, and another 900 flights for Friday were scrapped, according to flight tracking website FlightAware. 
U.S. airlines, including Delta, United, and American Airlines, said earlier this week they were waiving change fees and fare differences for passengers in a range of affected areas. Turkey praised Sweden for responding to its security concerns but stressed more was needed to win Ankara's full backing for Stockholm's stalled NATO membership bid. Sweden and Finland broke with decades of military non-alignment and applied to join the US-led defense alliance in response to Russia's February invasion of Ukraine. Turkey and Hungary are the only NATO members yet to ratify the Nordic neighbors' applications. Turkey is yet to lift its veto on Sweden's bid for NATO membership. Sweden's Supreme Court provoked Turkish anger by blocking the extradition on Monday of a journalist Ankara implicates in a failed 2016 coup attempt. If we are to be NATO allies, we need to see concrete cooperation in the fight against terrorism. But our talks continue in a constructive way. The recent rejection of the extradition decision of Kenes has unfortunately seriously poisoned this atmosphere. His Swedish counterpart said that constitutional changes will make it easier to prosecute terrorist activities starting in January. I would like to underline that, uh, as I stated, we take our commitments seriously. Sweden has an independent judiciary and all cases are reviewed through that independent judiciary. Sweden and Finland broke with decades of military non-alignment and applied to join the U.S.-led defense alliance in response to Russia's February invasion of Ukraine. Turkey and Hungary are the only NATO members yet to ratify the Nordic neighbor's applications. Turkey has held up the process while pressing the two countries to crack down on groups it considers to be terrorist organizations such as Kurdish militants. Going into a short commercial break, we'll be back soon with more World News. Welcome back to World News tonight. Now, striking ambulance workers in England and Wales manned picket lines escalating a pay dispute between the government and a host of public sector staff after nurses' strikes. Now, it's all workers that are walking out in strikes. Employees across the United Kingdom economy are demanding salary rises to match or beat decades high inflation, currently running at nearly 11%, which is spurring the worst cost of living crisis in a generation. Another day, another round of strikes in the UK. On Thursday, it was the turn of highway workers to walk out, downing tools for four days in London and the southeast of England. It will reduce the number of officers able to deal with collisions, as well as causing delays to reopening carriageways and motorways. It comes after a week of strike chaos in the country. Thousands of nurses walked out on Tuesday, and just the next day, unprecedented ambulance strikes which saw thousands of paramedics and call handlers stage a walkout in an ongoing pay dispute. We've had another poor pay award uh, and services are increasingly under the decline across the country, across the NHS, and the government will refuse to negotiate with us over pay, the most basic of issues that we have, and it's left us no alternative but to take action against it. The government response has been to blame the unions. A statement which was strongly refuted by union leaders who put the blame firmly at the government's door. Well, look, every time the health secretary speaks, I've got my head in my hands. I have never seen such an abdication of leadership than I have from Rishi Sunak and the health secretary. The coming days will see even more strike action across the country, with widespread rail strikes planned for Christmas Eve, expected to affect thousands trying to get home for the holidays. After weeks of negotiations, Benjamin Netanyahu is poised to head a new coalition government seen as the most right-wing in Israel's history. Among the most controversial deals he reached is the appointment of Jewish ultranationalist Itamar as security minister in charge of the National Police Force. Down to the wire. Benjamin Netanyahu's last-minute announcement of a coalition government drew mixed reactions on the streets of Jerusalem. We hope that this government will uh, be a real right-wing government that will uh, do a lot of good for the nation of Israel, build the country, build uh, new settlements. 
After weeks of negotiations following his November election victory, Netanyahu, already Israel's longest-serving prime minister, is on the verge of returning to power once again, with the help of far-right and ultra-Orthodox partners. Among the incendiary figures in his power-sharing deal, Itamar ben Gvir, who was once convicted of incitement to racism, has been appointed security minister to take charge of the national police. Bezalel Smotrich, who has been accused in the past of plotting violent attacks against Palestinians, is set to have widespread authority over West Bank settlement construction, in addition to being finance minister. Avi Maos, who has described himself as a proud homophobe, will control parts of the country's education system. The New York Times wrote, Mr Netanyahu will lead a hardline six-party coalition whose members seem to upend the judicial system, reduce Palestinian autonomy in the occupied West Bank, further strengthen Israel's Jewish character and maximise state support for the most religious Jews. The Belgian paper Le Soir ran a headline reading Israel is putting in place the most extremist government in its history. The United States and the European Union have both said they will judge the new government by its policies, not its personalities. A Belgian court has decided that Eva Kaili, the Greek member of the European Parliament, at the centre of a cash for influence scandal implicated in Qatar, will remain in jail pending trial. Kaili will be tried in Belgium first, but will also face trial in Greece if the investigation currently underway finds proof of money laundering, with widespread reports that if she is found guilty, she could face up to 15 years in prison. Greek politician and former vice president of the European Parliament, Eva Kaili, will be held in detention for another month following a decision by a court in Belgium. Kaili is suspected of being at the center of one of the EU's biggest corruption scandals and her lawyers had requested her release from prison with an electronic tracking device. Her legal team has now 24 hours to appeal this decision. Kylie has been in custody since the 9th of December with her partner Francesco Giorgi, who is also jailed. The two are suspected of working together along with others to funnel bribes from Qatar and Morocco to parliamentarians in exchange for influence on EU policy. And I have convened an extraordinary... Qatar has strongly denied these allegations, while Morocco has yet to respond. The scandal came to public attention earlier this month after police launched more than 20 raids across Belgium and Italy. Hundreds of thousands of euros were recovered at a home and in a suitcase at a hotel in Brussels. Twitter may soon come under EU supervision due to CEO Elon Musk's decision on the platform prompting a probe into the site by German officials who claim that a serious infringement of freedom of speech due to the takeover. Twitter should be directly monitored by the European Commission. That was an idea put forward by a senior German official on Thursday. Sven Giegold works on competition policy at Germany's economy ministry. He argued that Twitter's erratic behaviour under new owner Elon Musk posed a threat to free speech. Giegold wrote a letter to two European commissioners where he said the EU should launch an investigation into the social media firm. He also wanted the commission to stop what he called Twitter's anti-competitive behaviour. Twitter and the EU did not immediately respond to requests for comment. On Tuesday, Musk said he would step down as Twitter CEO. The months since his $44 billion takeover have seen chaos and controversy. News organisations, officials in Europe and advocacy groups all criticised Twitter's decision to suspend journalists' accounts, though they were later reinstated. German Chancellor Olaf Scholz's government has previously said it had grown concerned with developments at the firm. Welcome back to World News Tonight and for more news let's take you around the world in a minute. Sam Bankman Fried was released on a $250 million bond package while he awaits trial on fraud charges related to the collapse of the FTX crypto exchange. The tight supply of medicine has been eased in Beijing as the city is going all out to ramp up the provision and production of key drugs and optimize medical services for patients. Heavy snowfall across north and western Japan prompted weather officials to call on residents to stay alert for winter blizzards. The snow that has continued along the Sea of Japan coast has killed eight people and injured dozens. 
Argentina's goalkeeper Emiliano Martinez, widely known as Divo, was received by a cheering crowd of thousands of people in his hometown. It was reported that over 150,000 people attended the event. Popular short video app TikTok is offering to operate more of its business at arm's length and subject to the outside scrutiny as it tries to convince the US government to allow it to remain under the ownership of Chinese technology company ByteDance. And that's all the news we got for you tonight. Join us again on Monday for more news around the globe. And in case you missed to watch any of the stories we aired tonight, you can always re-watch by catching us on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash English. And we leave you tonight with Poland recreating cities out of gingerbread and chocolate to give a sweet touch to this year's Christmas. Thank you for watching. Good night and wish you all a holly jolly Christmas.